task force and everyone else round the clock for months and I just want to thank Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mr. President. And, uh, and let me echo your words about all the dedicated men and women on the White House Coronavirus Task Force and the team that you assembled in January, and some of whom are with us today, Seema Verma with CMS, Admiral Girard with the U.S. Public Health Service, and Dr. Steve Hahn of the FDA and others represent a, a level of commitment and dedication that's been inspiring for me to have the privilege to work with, and so I, I thank you for your gracious words. Uh, that White House Coronavirus Task Force met today. Uh, it uh, was reported to us that uh, at this moment, more than 746,000 Americans have tested positive for the coronavirus. Unfortunately, more than 68,000 Americans have fully recovered. Uh, but sadly, more than 41,000 Americans uh, have lost their lives to the coronavirus. Uh, and we always want to express our deepest sympathies to the families in their loss, as well as to all the families who have loved ones that are struggling with this disease. Uh, today, um, we've seen encouraging news again about our progress as a nation. President Trump reflected on those momentarily, but um, the Coronavirus White House Task Force today learned that our large Metro areas continue to stabilize and even see progress. The New York metro area, including New Jersey, New York, Long Island, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, all appear to be past their peak. The Detroit metro area also appears to be past its peak and is stable. New Orleans metro area actually is the most stable of all areas where we had a major metropolitan outbreak. And the Denver uh, metro area uh, is stable. Uh, we're dealing in Colorado with a meatpacking plant uh, issue. And of course, California and Washington remain low uh, and steady. Areas that we continue to watch carefully on the task force include the Chicago metro area, Boston metro, and the Philadelphia metropolitan area. The progress that we are making uh, is a tribute uh, to the, the American people. It's a tribute to state and local leaders in all of these areas uh, and the partnership that our president has forged. But uh, we just want to encourage every American, uh, as we see this progress, to continue to, to heed your state and local authorities. Uh, I think the American people know no one wants to reopen America more than President Donald Trump. Uh, but uh, I want to assure you we're going to continue to work with governors of every state with the President's guidelines for opening up America again, and we're going to work in a way that we can consolidate the progress that we have made and help move our states toward reopening our country. Uh, we also received a report today and the Coronavirus Task Force. At this point, uh, 5,528 military personnel have been deployed across 24 hospitals and facilities and 28,700 National Guard are on duty. Uh, on the subject of supplies, the President spoke about this at, at length, but uh, at the present moment, we have more than 9,055 ventilators on hand. We actually added 91 ventilators to that supply because of the production uh, that the President and our task force at FEMA has activated in the next seven days. We'll be adding 576 ventilators to the strategic national stockpile. As the President mentioned, our airbridge continues to work. 64 flights completed, 50 more flights on the horizon, literally bringing in uh, medical equipment from around the country and around the world and deploying it to critical areas. Uh, finally, uh, tomorrow, as the President uh, announced, uh, we'll be hosting a conference call with all of the nation's governors, all the states and territories uh, from the headquarters at, at FEMA. Uh, and we'll be working with the governors uh, to ensure them that we're, we're helping them to uh, review and evaluate uh, the President's guidelines for opening up America again, uh, the criteria that we believe is appropriate to, and necessary before states can move into any phase one change in the mitigation strategies, but also at the President's direction tomorrow. We'll be providing all the nation's governors and all of their uh, health officials with detail about the testing infrastructure that exists all around the country. 
will be specifically providing uh, governors and state health officials with information about all of the lab capability that exists in their state, uh, and also uh, we'll be updating them uh, on our efforts to identify the kind of supplies the president just held up, and our efforts to make sure that those supplies are at, uh, at all of those uh, laboratories as the need should arise. Remember that uh, a month ago we had done 80,000 uh, coronavirus tests in America. This weekend we cleared more than 4 million, and we're currently testing more than a million Americans a week. We fully expect to actually have tested more than 5 million Americans before the end of this month. But at the president's urging, we're going to continue to scale that testing and then work with governors to make sure that they can manage and implement and deploy that testing in the manner that will most support their efforts to move their states forward. Remember that the testing that is contemplated uh, in uh, the uh, the uh, guidelines for opening up America again for phase one are, are testing people that have symptoms uh, that may be coronavirus and then also having the testing resources to deploy to vulnerable communities, nursing homes or other vulnerable communities in the, uh, that we have identified as needing additional what is called monitoring or surveillance testing. We believe we have the testing today around the country that would allow any state in America to move into phase one if they've met the other criteria, 14 days of consistent declines and strong hospital capacity so that the system would not be overwhelmed in the event of a flare-up. But we're going to be working with governors tomorrow on the subject of testing and supplies. And as President said again uh, this evening, uh, we're here to help. Uh, we forged a partnership with governors around the country, uh, and tomorrow we'll be building on that partnership to hopefully arrive at the day that we can make sure governors around the nation have the best advice and the best resources to put America back to work. Thank you, Mr. President. So just a few weeks ago, we stood here and asked the American health care system to delay elective surgeries and procedures. And the reason why we did this is we wanted to make sure that the healthcare system could deal with any surges. We wanted to preserve equipment, make sure that they had the appropriate workforce to handle any surge. And our healthcare system did a fantastic job. They very quickly stood up telehealth services and under the president's leadership, we started paying for these services under the Medicare program. But the reality is not everything can be addressed by telehealth. There may be a woman that needs surgery for breast cancer, um, somebody who has cataracts in their eyes that need to be able to see better, and sometimes a doctor just needs to be able to listen to their patient's heart. Um, we've heard across the country that doctor's offices have closed and many healthcare systems are furloughing their staff, nurses and doctors. Under the president's leadership, we've put out over $90 billion in accelerated payments under the Medicare program, uh, provided $30 billion of grants with more dollars on the way. But thanks to the American people, we are in a much different place. Um, you heard from the Vice President that there are many places around the country where they're seeing a decline in cases, and hospitals are reporting that they have unused capacity. And so as part of our opening up America, we are issuing guidelines today about how we can reopen the healthcare system. So these are recommendations around phase one. Now every state and local official has to assess the situation on the ground. They need to make sure that they can still address surges. They need to make sure that they have adequate supplies and a plan for conserving supplies. They need to be able to screen patients and healthcare workers for COVID virus. And they need to make sure that patients feel safe when they come in to seek health care services by assuring that they have the appropriate cleaning in place and that they observe social distancing inside the health care facilities. And this isn't going to be like a light switch. It's more like a sunrise where it's going to be a gradual process. And health care officials across the country and health care systems need to decide what services should be made available. And ultimately, doctors and patients need to make decisions about uh, their health care services. And we want to make sure that systems are reopening so that they can stay open and doing that in a very measured way. And I want to thank all the health care workers on the front lines that have done a fantastic job in providing care and comfort 
um, serving as a liaison between family members. They've done a fantastic job and we owe a debt of gratitude to them and to all those providers that did adhere to our guidelines. They did the right thing and it has made an extraordinary difference. I also want to take a couple of seconds here to talk about our nursing homes. Um, our hearts and minds are with the patients and the families of those living in nursing homes. This is an extraordinarily difficult situation. Um, people living in nursing homes are of the most vulnerable patients. They're elderly. Many of them have underlying health conditions. Um, and this has been a very hard situation. And I really appreciate the strong efforts of governors and local communities that have shown great leadership in supporting nursing homes across the country, particularly Governor Baker, Governor Hogan, that have had special efforts around supporting nursing homes. Um, FEMA is also working on a plan to make sure that nursing homes have the supplies that they need. And just last week, we increased the reimbursement in the Medicare program for high throughput tests. And we are also paying for labs to go out to nursing homes to collect samples. And that's going to really support efforts on nursing homes in order to isolate patients. Um, today, we are also announcing, under the president's leadership, an effort around nursing home transparency. It's important that patients and their families have the information that they need. They need to understand what's going on in the nursing home. And so today, we are announcing that we are requiring nursing homes to report to patients and their families if there are cases of COVID virus inside the nursing home. We are also requiring nursing homes to report directly to the CDC when they have cases of COVID virus. And this is very important as you've heard Dr. Burks talk about as we reopen the United States, our surveillance effort around the COVID virus will also begin in nursing homes. And so by having this reporting system, this will support CDC's efforts to have surveillance around the country and to support efforts around contact tracing so that we can mitigate the spread of the virus in those communities that show spread starting. There you are, Sergeant, virus. mitigate. <laughs> so again, I want to thank all of the local officials that have done an amazing job in supporting the nursing homes and would urge all state and local leaders to follow their lead and do everything that we can to keep nursing home residents safe. Thank you. Thank you. Travels with John Stevenson and June Diamond Stevenson. Dr. Hahn is here. If you need, to, he'll tell you maybe a little bit later if you want this, but I can tell you that uh, very simply, uh, the level of, at which they're approving things, tests, and uh, being on top of the people that are doing the testing for uh, therapies and for vaccines has never, they've never seen anything like this. So I wanna thank you very much and stick around, maybe they'll have some questions, okay? Uh, please, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, thank you very much. Um, if there were groups of people planning to protest tomorrow against the government shutdown, what would be your advice? Against the shutdown? Yeah, that they want the shutdown lifted. Should they you go away to the yeah. state where they haven't been forced They don't have any rights. Just people feel that way. You're allowed to protest. I mean, they, they feel that way. I watched the protest and they were all six feet apart. I mean, it was a very orderly group of people. And I'll, but, you know, some, some have gone too far. Some governors have gone too far. Some of the things that happened are uh, maybe not so appropriate. And I think in the end, it's not going to matter because we're starting to open up our states. And I think they're going to open up very well. We're going to be watching it. We're going to be watching it very closely. We're working with them on testing. We're working with them on whatever they need. I don't think they need ventilators anymore. Uh, I believe the, the term the governor used was phenomenal. We've done a phenomenal job. That was the term that, that was the only sentence they left out, which is okay. But I, I, I appreciate that that's what Governor Cuomo said. But we have, they've done a phenomenal, they, these people have done a phenomenal job. Uh, as far as, uh, uh, protesters, you know, I see protesters for all sorts of things, and uh, uh, I'm with everybody. I'm with everybody. Please, in the back, go ahead. In the back, go ahead. You ready? Yeah. Yes, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Jen Kelly Reno, uh, Yesterday, you pointed out that Iran was likely not truthful in the reporting of the virus. Uh, meanwhile, Senator Dianne Feinstein and other Democrats are looking for $5 billion in aid to Iran. Are you considering giving any aid to Iran? Uh, if Iran needed aid on this, I would be willing to do something if they want it, if they ask for it. I would be certainly willing. They were hit very hard. Obviously, those numbers weren't correct numbers that they reported. But if they needed help, if they needed aid, if they needed ventilators, we had 
thousands of ventilators uh, currently on hand and ventilators under construction under uh, that are under construction. That's a mosquito. I don't like mosquitoes. I don't like mosquitoes at all. Um, but uh, if they, uh, yeah, we would certainly be willing to help. Uh, what they should do is be smart and make a deal. It's only because of, uh, you know, you look at what happened. It's uh, John Curry, I guess, just doesn't want them to make a deal. And they're probably figuring they can wait. And uh, maybe it will be Biden and they'll own America if Biden gets. And, and they know with me, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. If, uh, if Joe Biden got in, they'd own America. But That's they'd right. China, Japan, Mexico, Canada. If we get any smarts at all, it'll be Donald Trump and Mike Pence and team. They know how to deal with the rest of the world fairly and justly. Which governors are your friends or which states? I don't want to mention, I don't want to mention names specifically, uh, but obviously uh, one we can mention that's this, but really much beyond this is Virginia with what they've done on guns. Uh, he is playing with the, your Second Amendment. We can't allow that to happen. Uh, and that is indirectly related to this because you know what's happened with guns. People are buying guns at a level that you haven't seen before because of because of this surge of, of, of plague. So what he did was totally inappropriate. Other than that, I'm not going to mention governors, but I have a list. You want to come two, in? Three, four, five, six, oh, seven. okay. You mentioned off the top that you hope that a deal may come tomorrow on the small business loan program. Well, I hope so. But, you know, for their employees, they couldn't take care. And I want to take care of those employees. I can't tell you that. I can just tell you that we're negotiating with the Democrats. And, you know, they negotiate the things that we can't do that we don't think are in the best interests of the people of this country. Uh, we are very close to a deal. I can't tell you whether or not we're going to get the deal or not. Who would say that? You want me to say we're, we're going to have a deal before we have a deal? We have a good chance of getting a deal. Uh, a lot of good discussions were had today. We have a good chance of getting the deal. We want the deal. We want to take care of our workers. We want to take care of our small companies. Uh, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I have a question for you and also for Dr. Hahn, if I may, I'm to answer your question. Sure. Uh, in your remarks uh, that you uh, made just a few moments ago in regards to reopening the U.S. economy, you said, I want it to be safe. And that's a sentiment, obviously, shared by no, tens of millions of Americans. I want it to be safe. And it seems at odds, Mr. President, with the tweet that you had on Friday about liberating those three particular states, Virginia, Minnesota, and Michigan, because none of those states, Mr. President, have met the requirements that the Vice President and others on the task force have talked about in terms of reopening the economy. Do you see those two? Well, if you uh, take, if we take Michigan, there were things in the Michigan that I don't think they were necessary or appropriate. Everyone knows that. I think the governor of Michigan, and we're getting along very well, but I think the governor of Michigan probably knows that. I think she probably wished she didn't put some of them in. You can't buy paint. You can't buy seeds. You can't, I mean, where did this stuff come from? No, no. We're going to be safe. We have to be safe. And we don't want to close anything. We're not going to be closing. But we're going to be doing it beautifully, systematically. We're working very well with the governors. I mean, I would say pretty much almost all of them. A couple of them, no matter what you do, you'll never satisfy them. You could, you could find the cure tomorrow, and, and they wouldn't be satisfied. They'd find a reason to complain. Wise guys. But uh, for the most part, we're working very well with the governors. We have a great relationship with the governors. Uh, I can tell you, I've been on numerous calls with governors, and during those calls, I mean, without exception, they were friendly. And that's going back even a month, a month from today. So I, I think that we're going to do a, a terrific job. I think the governors are going to do a terrific job, but we're starting to open our country. And, you know, as you know, some, I just spoke with Greg Abbott today from Texas. He's fantastic. He's a fantastic governor. And he's going to be opening up parts of Texas. And you're going to be opening up parts of other countries, you know, what they, uh, uh, other states. And you know what that is. And by the way, other countries are at a point where they're starting. I see where Germany's starting to open up a little section. So there are a lot of great things happening. And uh, we're going to start to open our country. And we're going to do it. It's like, as I say, it's like a beautiful puzzle. The state might even be a portion of a state. You know, there are states, very big states. And you can have portions of states, Mike. You have a portion, you have a county, which is perfect. And you have another county that's a sort of 
it's still pretty far away, even if it's within the same state, and it's not doing so well. But they may open up parts. So we're going to do it very, very carefully, and uh, I think it's going to be uh, very successful. But when you say safe, I want it to be very safe. Thank you very much. Let him, let him just do this one. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Hahn. Dr. There's a question uh, that I don't know the answer to, and I was hoping that you could uh, provide an answer to. There's an epidemiologist uh, at the University of Alabama in Birmingham who's actually a COVID-19 survivor, and his name is Michael Say. And his question is this, why would the virus suddenly be different? And why would people's susceptibility be any different on May the 1st or on June the 1st? or on July the 1st, and this all relates to reopening the economy. Can, can you explain or give an answer to that particular question? I don't think we have uh, evidence that one would be more susceptible or less. What I think we can say is that the mitigation efforts have really helped with respect to this, um, and that uh, what we've seen is the number of cases have gone down. And if we follow the gating criteria for the opening, we're then able to institute phase one and have the appropriate measures in place to actually reduce any chance of flare-up of the cases. Is there a chance of a sort of rebounding uh, if, if you reopen too soon without uh, the type of mitigation efforts that we've had still in place? Yes, there's a chance. And I think Dr. Fauci and, and Dr. Burks talked about this at the podium. And the, the key here is the surveillance uh, that is being put in place with the CDC. I think that'll be a really great help in terms of trying to reduce reduce that risk. Thank you. And I think they have the rest of that clip. I just thought it was a very good clip. Um, I think it's a tribute to New York. I think it's a tribute to the federal government. And I thought it was nice. So I think they have that now. They can try it. Go ahead. Have we saved everyone? No. But have we lost anyone because we didn't have a bed or we didn't have a ventilator? or we didn't have health care staff? No. Uh, the more people we lost are the people we couldn't save. Not for lack of trying and not for lack of uh, doing everything that we could do as a society, not only as a government and as a health care system. Okay. Um, yes, I did. Since you shared with us something else that you saw on TV today, I have a question about something you said on Thursday, which is that you were angry because information about the virus should have been told to us earlier and a lot sooner. People knew it was happening, and people did not want to talk about it. Sure. Many Americans are saying the exact same thing about you, that you should have warned them the virus was spreading like wildfire through the month of February instead of holding rallies with thousands of people. Why did you wait so long yeah, who are you to with? warn them? Who are you with? And why did you yeah. uh, not have social distancing until March 16th? Who are you with? I'm Weecha Jang with CBS News. Okay. So if you look at what I did in terms of cutting off or banning China from coming in. And nationals. But by the way, not Americans who are also nice nice just relax. We cut it off. People were amazed. These gentlemen, everybody was amazed that I did it. We had 21 people in our room. Everybody was against it but me. Dr. Fauci said, had I not done that, perhaps tens of thousands and maybe much more than that, people would have died. I was very early, very, very early. And we just saw you saw Brett Bear making a statement. They had a debate well into February. And not even mentioned, it wasn't even mentioned, the Democrats. We were very early, oh, I'm, I'm the president. And you know what I just did? And you know what I just... And by the way, when you issued the ban, the virus was already here. Okay, and you know how many people, when I issued the ban, how many cases of virus were in the United States when I issued the ban? Do you know the number? There was... No, no, how many cases? Remember I said one person. How many cases were here when I issued the ban? Did you know? No, no, no. You have to do your research. How many? I did my research. On the 23rd of March, you said you knew this was going to be a pandemic. Can I tell you what? I did know it. I did know it. All I have to do is look. So you knew it was oh, anybody knew it. Just, are you ready? How many cases were in the United States when I did my ban? 
How many people had died in the United States? Did you acknowledge that you didn't think you were Keep your, your voice now, please. Right? Keep your voice now. Did you not how many, how right? many, how many cases were in the United States? I did a ban where I'm closing up the entire country. This is the ignorance of the media. How many people died in the United States? Answer her, her his question, lady, because you can't. There were no deaths, zero deaths at the time I closed up the country. Nobody was there. And you should say thank you very much for good judgment. Go ahead, please. You just mentioned Germany. Uh, Germany is allowing the small stores to open. Yes, they are. I just spoke to Does this give you confidence that some European countries are on the mend of recovery? Well, I hope so. Yeah. We yes. hope it works out. Look, I, I, spoke well, with, some I, spoke with Angela. I spoke with Angela, and they're going to start a process of opening very much like we are. We are, too. Um, I spoke with numerous governors. They're doing it also. Uh, areas that have been... That where the, number one, they've done a good job, and where they don't have much of a problem. Uh, Germany's starting the process also, yes, and I'm very happy about that. Some places in Europe, as you know, can't start the process for a while. Yes, ma'am, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I have two Nevada questions. The first one, the mayor of Las Vegas thinks it's total insanity for business to be shut down in Nevada, which the governor of this uh, ordered. Who's right? Well, they shut one of my hotels down, too. Okay, so, you know, I'm not involved in that. I could be if I wanted to. I just chose not to be. And by the way, just so you know, I could be if I wanted to, but I chose not. But they closed a very big hotel that I have in Nevada down in Las Vegas. Uh, it's a very severe step he took. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. But, you know, you could call that one either way. I know the mayor is very upset with it. Some owners are very upset with it. Some of the uh, developers out there are very upset. Uh, others... They say, hey, we've got to get rid of it. I, I, can, I can see both sides of that. Um, one other question. Um, I asked you recently about an SBA rule that said that the paycheck protection money could not go to small casinos. You said you'd look into it, and clearly something happened. They are looking into it right now. Because they, they do have, you know, they have small casinos that don't have too many people, and they are looking, and they're going to make a ruling, I understand, next week. They already did make a ruling. Changed it from uh, small casinos that make more than a third of their income could qualify to have. Yeah, but they're looking at that. They're continuing to look at that. It's a big. It's a big topic. There's a lot of people involved. Let's give it a shot. Um, the governor Cuomo, as you played in that clip, has indeed praised a lot of what the federal government has done. But he. No, excuse me. Excuse me. He didn't say a lot. He said we did a phenomenal job. He didn't say a lot. He didn't say you did a good job on ventilators, but nothing else. No, he said we did a phenomenal job. So get your facts straight, lady. One of the most inaccurate reporters. Go ahead. What he said is that, and along with a bunch of Republican governors who've said what they need, though, is a national strategy when it comes to testing. Because on supply, they say that they're competing against one another. They said the same thing with ventilators, and now we have so many that we're going to be able to send them and help other countries that are in need. Uh, we're doing great on testing, and we are actually using the act, as you know, on a certain cost. Yeah. But what about on the reagents? They say that that's something we, that they can't We're get in great shape. It's so easy to get. That, reagents and, and swabs are so easy to get. When you have to build a very expensive piece of machinery controlled by computers, that's a different thing. And uh, no, we'll have, everything is going to be in very good shape very soon. We're going to be in very good shape very soon. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, just the latest uh, stimulus package, will that have funding for uh, states and local governments? Um, Mr. Well, I don't want to comment on it, but we will be saving that for another time. Will you be willing to... And, I, I, and by the way, so states and local governments need it. I'm the first one to admit that. We're going to be saving that for another little bit of a later date. will probably be our next negotiation. Okay. But they do... Uh, I'm in favor of it, I will say. And I told the Republicans today... I, I think a great talk with uh, Republican senators today, and all of them, I think, just about all of them, and a uh, conference call. And we are going to be, that'll be a very big topic over the next uh, couple of weeks. It's very important. And what is the administration doing to make sure that, uh, you know, the hotel chains and, and hedge funds... Well, that's another one, says, yeah. Uh, no, that's uh, another one. You have hotels that are big, massive buildings that are under-levered, but if you have no income at all coming out, no income at all, uh, these hotels are, they go from under lever to, they have to be closed down. It's a terrible thing. Uh, I don't know that they're working on that specific problem, but it's a problem they should be talking about. I mean, you have people that own a hotel, 
where they go from having a very successful hotel, with, you know, many employees, thousands of people, to all of a sudden closing it down. I read where my wonderful place in Florida, in Miami, Doral, they had to let a lot of the employees go because it's essentially closed. You can't use it. You know, you can't have the restaurants. You can't have it. So you know, you have to close it down. That's a that's an example of many many hotels are closing down throughout the country, and hopefully they're going to be able to open up relatively quickly. Well, specifically for small businesses, um, yeah. would you would the administration well, it depends be able to how the hotel is considered? You know, is it owned by a big chain? But even if it's owned by a big chain, that's devastating. If they have. 200 hotels in the country and they're closed. And it's not only in the country, remember this, this is all over the world. You know, they have, they could have 2,000 hotels that are in other countries, they're also closing. We're in, we're in better shape than most, when you think about it. So I think we're going to be looking at it. I think it's a very big problem. And it's a lot of people employed. Yeah, here we go. Mr. President, uh, 22, more than 22 million Americans are currently unemployed yeah. as a result of this. Uh, today we hit the grim milestone of more than 40,000 Americans uh, now having died from the coronavirus. Um, can you explain then why you come out here and you are reading clips and and uh, and showing clips of praise for you and for your administration? Is this really the time for self-congratulations? Well, I, I will tell you this. What I'm doing is I'm standing up for the men and women that have done such an incredible job. Not for me, for the men and women, admirals, That's vice right. president, if I might, but all of the men and women, thousands, tens of thousands of them that built hospitals in New York and New Jersey and all over this country. That's and right. Good time that and that's what he should a do. A thousand beds in four days. I'm sticking up for those people. Those people have been incredible. I'm also sticking up for doctors and nurses and military doctors and nurses. That you played and, and what you read earlier was praising you and your well, administration. All I played today was Governor Cuomo to do that, sir. saying very positive things about the job the federal government has done. The and, those people, and, those, and those people have been just absolutely excoriated by some of the fake news, like you, your CNN, your fake news. And let me just tell you, they were That's right, you are fake like news. You that don't know any better, because you don't have the brains you were born with. You should be praising the people who have done a good job, <laughs> not doing what you do, even that question. So just so you understand, if we didn't do a job... Why now, not why are you doing it? I'll tell you why now. Are you ready? Because these people are right now in hospitals. It's dangerous. It's going to a battlefield. And I want these people, I want you, I want you in the profession. It's all about that. It's, it's not about me. No, nothing's about me. And you, look, look, you're never going to treat me fairly, many of you. And I understand that. I, I don't even know. I got here with the worst, most unfair press treatment, they say, in the history of the United States. That's president. true. They did say Abraham Lincoln had very bad treatment, too. Let, let me just tell you, has your name in it. it talks about Trump remaking the playbook. Well, that's a positive thing, because that's an exercise in how to do it and what to do. And that's good for the future. People can learn from that. But I want the men and women of this country that are in danger, the admirals and the generals that have done a job like they've never done before. They're in war. We're in war. You know, I call it the invisible enemy. That's a war. And it's a dangerous war. We're also at a level when you said 40,000 people, and you're right, almost 40,000 people. And and what, how, more than, okay, good, correct me, correct me. Well, I'm really glad you corrected me, CNN. But here, here's the story, let me just tell you something. If we didn't do what we did, the 40,000 right now could be a million people, could be a million people, not 40,000, it could be a million. We're tracking at much less than the lowest possible estimate. And that's a great tribute to a number of people and a number of things. One of the things that it's a tribute to is what's taken place in this country with the American people. Because they've gone inside, they've done it. They've done a job that nobody thought was That's possible. right. And in fact, when they did the models, as they call them, nobody thought it was possible. They did models not based on this kind of success. I've seen New York streets, and I see it in the morning. I've watched all my life New York streets. And you can't even see the pavement. There's so many people. And you take a look this morning. You take a look. Even on Friday morning, I looked at it. I saw it through a camera. There wasn't a person on Fifth Avenue. There wasn't a person on Madison Avenue. I've never seen anything like it. Because people have really listened to instructions. And they've listened to what we've had to say. And That's they've right. They've listened. 
And those people, sh people should really give them a lot of credit, including people like you, because you just don't have the sense to understand what's going on. All right, yeah, please, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, should publicly traded companies like Shake Shack and Quantum Corp and Bruce Chris, should they have access to the PPP program? Well, it would depend, it would depend. A lot of those, I, I don't know much about any of those companies, but uh, a lot of times they're owned by franchisees where they own one or two places and, you know, they are small businesses. So a lot of that would, uh, that would depend on what the formula is. But again, uh, Many of those companies are, you know, they're out to franchisees. A franchisee could open up one of the places that you mentioned. And so, yeah, I would say that's important, actually. That's like a restaurant. Go ahead, please. You know, these, uh, you, you referred to these protests earlier. You know, some of them are getting pretty intense, and we're actually getting some death threats to some governors who are reluctant. You are in the media? No, the governors are getting death threats. You know, governors in Kentucky, Michigan, Virginia, they're getting increased levels of death threats. Are you concerned that you're talking about liberation? I've never heard of any death threats here in Kentucky, buddy. I've seen the people, I've seen them, interviews of the people. These are great people. Look, they want to get, they call cabin fever. You've heard the term? They've got cabin fever. They want to get back. They want their life back. Their life was taken away from them. And, you know, they learned a lot during this period. They learned to do things differently than they have in the past. And, you know, they'll do it hopefully until the virus is passed. And when the virus passes, I hope we're going to be sitting next to each other in baseball games, football games, basketball games, ice hockey games. I hope we're going to be sitting next to each other. I hope you have golf. To, the Masters is going to have 100,000 people, not 25 people watching at the course. So be uh, I, uh, no, I'm not. I, I think these people are... Uh, I've never seen so many American flags. I mean, I, I'm seeing the same thing that you're seeing. I don't see it any differently. The who? Nazi. Uh, that I totally would say no way. But I've seen, I didn't see that. I see all, of course I'm sure the news plays that up. I've seen American flags all over the place. I have never seen so many American flags at a rally as I have at the Israelis. These people love our country. They want to get back to work. Please go ahead. Well, I just tell you this: uh, Roger Stone was treated very unfairly. Paul Manafort, the Black Book, turned out to be a fraud. We learned that out during the various last number of weeks and months. Uh, they had a Black Book that came out of Ukraine, turned out to be a fraud. Turned out to be a fraud. They convicted a man, turned out to be a fraud. General Flynn was a highly respected person, and it turned out to be a scam on him. The FBI said he didn't lie, and Mueller's people wanted him to go to jail, okay? So what am I gonna do? You'll find out what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna say what I'm gonna do, but I will tell you the whole thing turned out to be a scam, and it turned out to be a disgrace to our country, and it was a takedown of a duly elected president, and these people suffered greatly. General Flynn, I mean, what they did to him, and even the FBI said, and they had some, and nobody bigger fan of the FBI than me at the level of the people that really matter, but the top of the FBI was scum, and what they did to General Flynn, and you know it, and everybody knows it, was a disgrace. That's right, it was. He was in the service for over 30 years. He ends up being a general and respected, respected. And almost his first day in office, they come in with papers they want to investigate him. Never happened before, and now the tables are turned. 